since I last spoke to you on the air here, uh, did the what is this is the experience? This is my show. We last did your show, the drive through, where you're the host and I'm the star. Since I talked to you then, all I've done is fill Cornette's collectibles orders, take deliveries of new merchandise or not restocked merchandise, I should say, uh, shipping supplies, the Monroe brothers, Alf and Ralph. We're here uh, two days in a row cleaning up and hauling off all the junk. All their work is finished. But finally, in the middle of all of this chaos, trying to make the shipping commitments, trying to make the recording commitments, the LaSalle has been delivered to Louisville. The Eagle has landed, Brian. Oh, fantastic. I've been waiting for this. I'd, I, if, if For the new viewers who are probably think I'm out of my mind, um, a year and a half ago, uh, Stacy's father passed away, and we talked about that on the program. And one of the things that we mentioned that as we were, you know, wrapping his estate up in Oklahoma and and transporting things places and making sure all the stuff was done straight was he had bought and owned for fifty years a nineteen twenty nine Cadillac LaSalle. And you made mockery of it, saying that whenever we got it cleaned up, fixed up, running again, whatever, that, that you had to have a video of me driving down the street like FDR with the top hat and well, the no, monocle. No, no, and everything. no, no, no. You got it kind of wrong. I did talk about that, and you did agree to wear a top hat and drive down the street while we film it, and you could wave to the camera wearing your top hat driving the car. <laughs> you agreed to this. And then I'll... I'll run for president and and start, you know, social security and and all kinds of <laughs> anyway. Um but anyway, but here was the issue and this is why it's taken so long because it it spent those 50 years in two places in a in a barn in California and a barn in, in Oklahoma. And so from the barn in Oklahoma, there was a friend of her dad's that had a trailer and was able to take it out of that barn and take it to his place. Uh, right outside of Spyro, Oklahoma. So we're not talking about right on the main road here. But he took it to his place. And he kept it safe and covered up and everything until, and then COVID started, and and we've you know got behind on this. But the podcast here saved me. The cult of Cornet. Those listeners out there, you people hold great power in your hands, and with great power becomes great. It comes great responsibility. Uh, uh, there's a fan, a listener named Brian Lieberman. His his dad, Mark, is in the classic car business and was able to help me, help us arrange the the transport because they, they transport these things, especially when it has to be enclosed because you don't want the rear view mirror of a 1929 Cadillac flying off because you'll never find another one, right? <clears throat> so they have these big the car transport trucks that they haul these collectors items, these various things in. He helped hook, hook me up with that because Brian listens to the show and he's, and, and they're both wonderful people. But then here, because of the fact that it was coming on a, one of these giant car transport trucks to Louisville, we had to meet him somewhere and, and get a smaller trailer to transfer it to, to then take it to the storage facility that we're going to have, and, and a trailer that could get in that, right? It can't take one of these giant fucking trucks. So anyway, the chain of command of this thing was a guy with a trailer and a, and a pickup truck, got it out of this barn, took it across the creek and down to his place, where then he took it to a giant church parking lot in Spyro, Oklahoma, where a big truck could get to it, where they transferred it. This thing is so heavy. They didn't have aluminum. They didn't have fiberglass. They didn't have anything but steel and glass back then. So it weighs like 6,000 pounds. They broke the winch getting it in the fucking truck. Then they haul it in that truck all the way to Louisville. We meet at a Walmart parking lot at 7.30 this morning in the coldness and the raininess. The raininess and coldness. And transfer it to another trailer. Um enclosed that this uh, this guy had that I got here in town with his truck so that then he could take it and he, we followed it. He followed us over to the storage facility where then he had brought two guys because one of the tires is flat because it's the original fucking tires. The tires are 90 years old. One of the tires is flat, so they have to get behind it. I said, hey, I'm not paying for the hernia surgery, right? And they pushed it out of the one trailer into the storage unit and it fit, boom, just like a hand in a glove. Boom, and now the LaSalle has landed. 
And then I had just enough time to jump back in, a, in Black Beauty and rush back across to where I'd come from to get to the post office to still not miss a day of shipping, folks. Almost 100 Cornets Collectibles packages went out after this, at which point in time I rushed back home and watched two hours of good to medium to rotten wrestling. Four hours, two shows of good to medium to rotten wrestling. We'll adjudicate those percentages here shortly. And then rushed up here at, at, at my command central at the castle to, to broadcast to the people. I almost never leave home and, and try not to be employed and, and I'm still running with my hair on fire from one thing to another constantly. You want to ride in my LaSalle, Brian? I don't, but to go back to what we were talking about you earlier. Went, oh, wait, God, you just blew off the... Actually, it's Stacy's LaSalle. I've just... I, it's mine by marriage. But you don't want to ride... You just blew that off. I'd much rather see you in a top hat waving the people as you slowly drive down the streets of Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> and I don't even remember, did we did we say monocle when we originally talked about this? Do you remember? I don't know, but I, th I think I have to have the monocle, don't I? I do I have to get, so. Do I have to get polio? You don't, <laughs> you Is it don't have to get too polio. Too soon for FDR? It's too soon uh, for polio jokes, uh, despite right. Jonah Salk's fantastic work. But uh, Except, well, those vaccines. That's right. Some people don't trust those things. But I think you need to do this, because you promised the listeners, and unless you want to be labeled a liar, and I can't imagine you want hey. to be called a liar. All right, well, it don't, it don't, we've got to get some work done on it. It's not going to be driving down the city street at this point right now. So. But I think even if it was on a trailer <laughs> being pulled down the street, as long as you were in it in a top hat, potentially with a monocle, again, smiling and waving. I think that's really what it's about. It's just, it has to be in motion. It doesn't have to be driving. <laughs> you, so you mean I got to get another four guys to pull this 6,000 pounds of solid American steel back out of here, put it up on another trailer, and drive it down the road just to wave at a camera for your enjoyment? You can tell these stooges that they will be stars on YouTube instantly. <laughs> they, hey. That might that might not be a selling point. Some of these people may not want to be seen and either in the federal oh, even fitness better. protection program even or better put possibly. them in a mask. <laughs> even well, then, better. Then I'm just Brody Lee running the dork order. <laughs> Brody Lee doesn't have a LaSalle. <laughs> Brody Lee ain't LaSalle cool, baby. That's right. Uh, it's got the original plates. Oh, cool. 1929. What state? California. Originally California. Wow. Yes. Cool. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, there's there may be bones in in the there's a trunk. You know, the trunk is actually a trunk. Because the trunk of the car in those days was a platform on the back of the car that you set an actual trunk. One of those humpback trunks or flat top trunks or whatever that you put sh extra shit in that you were carrying around, and that's why it's called the trunk. It's the boot, the boot over in the UK, but I don't know why they would have carried shoes on the back of the fucking car, but I digress. I think there may be some human bones I think that in there somewhere. That trunk's going to be mighty helpful for when you go to the post office. <laughs> well, that's an excellent segue, uh, Brian, because I this is the time of the program where I usually give the merchandise update, and I say if you've ordered from jimcornett.com at Cornette's Collectibles, over the last X period of time, well, I'm X days behind, or I've got an X day turnaround, or this is what's going on. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Because at this point, they've, they've taken me at my word, and I appreciate that y'all have. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, get your orders in early for Christmas because they're coming in at record pace. So I, instead of having a, a particular turnaround time, I've been doing stacks of T-shirt orders, stacks of face mask orders, stacks of book orders, stacks of DV orders. There's the internationals over there. And it's all going out as quick as my little fingers can pack it. But <sighs> for Christmas, folks, if you want it by Christmas, I am getting a little bit farther behind because things have picked up. Internationals, I've said I will fill them, but it's probably too late for you right now. Maybe Canada might sneak in if I get the chance to get it turned around. But internationals, do not be upset. If, if, if Everything through the last few days internationally, as of what is today, Friday, December 4th, has been sent out. 
So, you know, if you ordered before December 1st, you're looking pretty good. It's it's in the mail and, and you should get it. But at this point, if you haven't ordered now in the turnaround, eh. Domestically, the next three or four days are crucial, ladies and gentlemen, because we're heading into a dark winter. It's going to take me a week probably to turn most of this stuff around. Some things may be two or three days, but as we said, it's the luck of the draw. So if your orders are in by December the 8th, I've got a week to turn them around, get them in the mail by the 15th, 16th, 17th. You should be fine, too. If you order by December 10th, it may be okay by Christmas if you're not that far away from me. And after that, it's not my fault, to quote gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. Uh, but I'm still going to be filling the orders but with the mail these days and et cetera, et cetera. So get it in as quickly as you can. I'm not even going to sell any of the products. They obviously sell themselves. And uh, and do remember that as of December 31st, the Cornette's collectible store at jimcornette.com will be closed for the month of January while we restock, refresh, and recharge. And obviously I will still, as anything that comes in through the evening and December 31st will go out uh, immediately afterwards. Oh, that's nice of you. Well, <laughs> it's a business. It's not, a, I'm not being beneficent is okay send me some money and maybe i'll send you your shit or i'll just wait a month or two no i'm it's a business here i'm trying to explain everything to everybody so they don't email me or tweet me and ask me questions they still will haven't you, you, haven't you i was about to say what you, do you think the odds are a bunch of people are going to say where the fuck's the store in january where the fuck is it or i ordered december 22nd it's already christmas eve why is it not here <laughs> 